everyone. I'm Tana. And this is Megan. Hi, Tana. <laughs> and we are here on Leisure Live, and we're giving you bite-sized crafting experiences. And today we want to talk about coloring. And we're going to feature the Colors of Nature coloring book by Lindsay Hopkins. And we have some spreads out here on the front of the table that show you how this book is laid out. And it is learn to draw and then color the shapes that you draw. And there's 15 different plants and flowers in this book and tips about those flowers. And they really bring back lots of great memories for me. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother and my great grandmother when I was growing up and they loved flowers. Yeah. And any any time, and my mother is crazy about flowers. I've heard you talk about your mother. Her oh. yard, literally, you, there's barely a path to walk through the yard <laughs> for the flowers. My grandfather's the same way. Even though he's 84 years old and can't really get around anymore, he's worried to death about his yard. And he, the, his main focus is making sure that he gets somebody over there to weed out his flower gardens. And My mother waters every day in a peg couch on developing this book and she is a better the better day book author and she does a really great job on some really classic fun books and this is one of hers she worked with Lindsay Hopkins Lindsay Hopkins to get it drawn and it really is it was a labor of love for her and it just turned out beautifully it did so Lindsay Hopkins her company is called pen and paint and you can find her on Instagram and probably Facebook too. I haven't checked to see if she has a Facebook page, but she does a lot of illustrations and she's done other coloring books. So definitely check out her work too. So the first uh, book, the, the first part of this book is about bluebells. And they are a really interesting flower. According to legends, fairies use them like iPhones. So basically they communicate with each other through the bluebells when they're gonna have a gathering. So like if they have a Friendsgiving, then they're gonna call up the other fairies and on say, the on the bluebells, <laughs> and say, come over to my house and have dinner. How funny. I think that's pretty cool. I love that you pulled these facts about these. <laughs> so let's talk about the buttercup. So if you hold a buttercup flower under the chin of a friend, if the reflection can be seen, the person is said to be like butter. Everyone loves butter, right? Hey, I want people to think I like butter. I, <laughs> come on, really, who doesn't like butter? So buttercups are another thing that you see a lot of different variations of. So they're a fun thing to color because you can pick any color yellow and any color green and you can make different shades. And that's one of the things that Megan and I wanted to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. is shading. The greens are really easy to, the leaves and things are really easy to do shading on. And yellows are another one that's really easy to get a good shading. Yeah, I agree. So I have some sunflowers here, and I'm not an artist by any means, but I'm going to show you guys what I do. So I will say we're going to do yellow. I would probably pick up an orange and just outline the area I was going to color. Then I would go back with my yellow. And color in from the top and then the orange from the bottom and just do it lightly and fade the two together and they have tools that you can use that will help in blending but you can just use your finger most of the time and just lightly blend the two together and that creates the effect of the color changing throughout the petal and buttercups are uh, all about happiness and positivity. And that's one of the things that we want to, here at Leisure Arts, we are looking to inspire you guys and help you to relax and help you have more positive experiences. And I think this book is a really great way to sit down and relax and learn about flowers, learn about plants, and spend some time with your friends, have a cup of coffee, and talk about the cool things that, the cool memories that flowers and plants bring. Sure. So there's all kinds of book clubs and stuff like that. I mean, parents can use this as a getaway time. You can get this book, have a group of your friends over, have a few glasses of wine, talk 
talk about some flowers, plant things together, know which ones grow best in your region. I mean, it could be a social type gathering. It would be really great. The other, another one, uh, another plant in the book is cactus. Did you guys know that you can fry and eat cactus? Interesting. You can also cut it up, put it in a salad. Now, I wouldn't say you can with all variations. Have you ever eaten cactus? I have. I have, and it's actually very good. Um, but did the one the other thing that's unique about a cactus is that they store lots and lots of water, and that is the reason why they are called succulents. Really? Yep. Isn't I that didn't cool? know that. And we see succulents around all the time now. Yeah, the little they're ones, everywhere. Yeah, and they really do hold up nicely as long as they have just a little bit of water. Overwatering them is a problem, though. I'm horrible. <laughs> I cannot keep an air plant alive. I mean, I'm guilty. I have tried all kinds of different plants. Now, if it's out, if it's outside and it's like a fruit or a vegetable, a vegetable. Let's go. With that. <laughs> if it's a vegetable, I can keep it alive. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, cactus is a place where you get lots of greens. That you know, you can use green a lot. They also have bright pops of color. So cactuses are really fun. They're really pretty. fun to color. So we have someone from New Newfoundland, Canada, saying hello and that she loves coloring and that it's calming. Awesome. We think it is too. We want to look for more and more ways to um, make coloring unique and make it more of an experience. So we'd love to have you guys' uh, comments back on the kinds of things you'd like to see connected to coloring because we believe it shouldn't just be a page Right. that you put down color on it all you should connect to it in some way and that's the reason why we've given you the details about these flowers and a way to practice and also a way to make notes about the things that you thought of when you were coloring yeah that's an awesome piece of the book so we got a giveaway too did we mention the giveaway uh, we didn't so we're going to give away one of these books plus a set of pencils a set of markers and a set of gel pens so if you guys keep your comments coming because we'll do a drawing after the video that uh, that someone will be pulled from to win this set of markers, pens, pencils, and the book. It'd be a really great prize. So let's see, what have we got? We've got a dahlia also inside this book. And the dahlia, the, do you know that the head of the flowers of dahlias can grow to as big as a foot across? That's crazy. That is a great big flower. Beautiful, too. Great big flower. And they are the favorite bloom of Queen Victoria. Really? I didn't know that. They are. So, what about a daisy, Tana? It looks like a daisy symbolizes purity and innocence. And have you ever taken a daisy and pulled the petals off and said, loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. That's a fun game with the daisy. <laughs> that is fun. I remember doing that as a kid. <laughs> We need to do that with one of these. No, I'm <laughs> do not take the flowers apart, please. As you can see, we have a Gerber daisy with us today. A beautiful little plant that's got a new little bloom on it. And I think all I'll have to do is water that little baby. And it will be really nice. We, got, we have some roses and a begonia with us today, too. I have some knockout roses in my backyard that have bloomed out really pretty this year. And you know, I've always, I have a question. Maybe somebody can answer this question for me. So, once your roses bloom and then they die, do you need to pull the buds off? Yes. To let them rebloom? Yes. Because I feel like it just looks dead otherwise. So, I'm out there like picking individual ones. But someone told me you didn't have to, I think they said deadhead them. But I wasn't sure if you had to or not. Well, my mother would tell you yes. Pull them off. Pull them off. <laughs> she's out there as she's watering. Pulling Picking. the dead pieces off to make sure that new ones can come back in its place. That's kind of how I felt like I needed to replace, I had to move them so new ones could grow in their That's place. That's right. <laughs> I have another memory that is uh, that comes up from this book. I used to live in Seattle and I used to go to the whole rainforest and walk in the rainforest. And those ferns smell so wonderful, like the damp soil mm -hmm. and the ferns and everything in the rainforest just feels so warm and comfortable and smells so great. And that is, uh, that's something that I really, this book brings back fond memories of those hiking trips in the forest. Yeah, I've seen a lot of ferns. I was recently in New Orleans for Craft Yarn Council and there was ferns growing out of everywhere. And it was amazing to me, I guess it's because of the humidity that they could, they grow they, huge. And they're growing out of bricks. Like where? <laughs> they don't where have any dirt. From? Yeah. <laughs> I know that's great, isn't it? 
Yeah, they were really pretty. And the other thing that is in the rainforest is uh, monstera, which is the big leaf. Oh yeah. The big leaf plant. Those are so trendy right now. You're seeing those everywhere. They are. They're much like the fiddle leaf fern that I have sitting here, but they have holes in them. Some of them have really big, beautiful blue leaves too, and they're just really wonderful. We got some questions. We maybe? do. We got some more questions. So. Clovis Perkins says everyone loves cactus. Yes, Clovis, they're so popular. Um, easy to grow. I think that's it. They're easy to grow. And she also said that her daisies didn't come up last year. Huh. Then maybe they got frozen out. Maybe. Let's see. Becky King Rowland says, wow, she loves flowers so much. She'll have to keep her eye open for this book. You can find it on our website and also on Amazon if you're interested in purchasing it online. And then all, all the major retailers will be carrying it. Yes, they will. So let's talk about a peony. This flower is what you should give someone for your 12th anniversary, by the way. If anybody's got a 12th anniversary coming up, it is the flower to give for that. And it's named after the Greek god of medicine and healing, and his name is Peon. Hmm. Which must be why they call it peony. A peon. Yeah. They're really, really pretty flowers. And the petals are, it's a kind of an irregular shape. So they're an easy one to draw because it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. And they overlay, overlap one another in a nice way so that someone with a not so steady hand would have a really easy time drawing that one. This book does such a great job of pointing out like, I mean, everybody can draw a circle, and then you're just adding on, and each time, well, sorry, step two, and then you're just adding on a little bit each time, so I like the fact that it breaks it down so simply. Oh, that brings me, I better show you my bluebells. Yeah, let's I see. I do not draw. My stick figures have broken backs and uh, <laughs> their hair on fire, but I drew these bluebells when I started, sat down to do this video today. And I'm pretty proud of it, as a matter of fact. Let me see. Look at that. Good job, Tom. <laughs> you did great. I'd never have guessed that you'd never drawn before. Yeah. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's a great thing about leisure arts books. It's all beginner friendly for the most part. I mean, we have a few intermediate books, but our main focus is on beginner friendly type projects, and we want to be able to ensure that when you start that project you're going to be able to finish it and you're going to be proud of what you did our completion rate that's what we are proud of we want people to be able to as she said complete the projects get started with something feel the experience and have something to show for it no pinterest fails no pinterest fails that's right <laughs> the other thing i was going to tell you about this book and we've done just a small project over here on this little clipboard on the side once you've colored something, you can cut these pieces out and use them for scrapbooking. It puts a personal touch on your scrapbooking if you've done some coloring mm -hmm. yourself. So I think that there's a lot of pieces in this book that would work really great for scrapbooking after you color them. Right. I'm always wondering what, like, you buy the book, you do the projects, and it's like, what do I do with it now? Like, I don't want to just leave it in this book on my shelf. I want to make it into something that I can see daily or I can give it as a gift. And there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. And we would love to hear ways that y'all have used your coloring in life in general. How have you, have you framed it and put it on the wall? Have you used it for scrapbooking? Send us your comments and let us know how you're using it. Um, just a little bit about the poppy. It is the symbol of restful sleep and recovery. Hmm, who would have guessed? I know. <laughs> I don't know. Have we heard anything about poppy seeds? I don't know. <laughs> Sleeping? Yeah, maybe. Uh, and then the rose. Napoleon's wife, Josephine, ad uh, adored roses so much that she grew over 250 variations of roses. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I bet her yard was beautiful. I'm thinking it must have been huge to yeah. get 250 kinds of roses in there. Yeah. She had a lot of land. Well, imagine where they had to travel to get the seeds for those 250. Yeah, yeah. that's a good thought, too. Mm -hmm. That's a good thought. So you don't have to travel very far to cover to color your own roses. That's you right. just need one of these books. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already talked about the bluebells. So we're, we're we've covered all the flowers. Let's talk a little bit about what you can do with this book. So Tana mentioned a little bit earlier about the note section. So um, 
it gives you you can say like what date you found you seen this flower where you seen it what memories it brought back as tana mentioned and then it tells you to sketch what you've observed in nature here so you can take your sketching experience that you've learned in the previous pages and you can apply it to the real life situation where you're seeing it in the world so that just gives you another memory it does and there's so many different uh people love different kinds of flowers i remember that my grandmother used to grow anything that was spiky so she would grow <laughs> cactus and she would grow holly aloe and vera. she would grow aloe vera and she would grow anything with spikes on it but my great-grandmother always loved the soft pretty things like petunias that always smell so good so, or hydrangeas or yeah. what i call the snowball bush that had a great big white flower mm -hmm. on it so i had the combination of the two things the woman who liked the sharp spiky things over here and the one that liked the soft and uh, yeah, smelly okay. things mm -hmm. over here. So it was a good balance when I was a kid. Yeah, awesome. Let's see. So if you guys do not forget, leave us comments. Tell us what you'd like to see from coloring. We'd love to have all of your suggestions. And it, it, more comments, the better, because it will put you into the drawing. And we will be giving away this wonderful book. And as well as the color pencils, the markers, and the gel pens. So let's talk a minute about these utensils, Hana. That's a great idea. So we've got the 80 pack of coloring pencils. What a value. 80 different coloring pencils. You've got your greens, your yellows, your pinks, your blues, your reds. And this is Leisure Arts brand, and we sell them on our website. You can also, I believe, buy them on Amazon and it is a really great product and as megan said a great value it is a great value also the marker set this is 60 double ended markers so you've got the fine point and then the thicker end which is very handy when you're trying to get in those tight lines and then our gel pen count is 24. so we've got 24 great colors for our gel pens gel pens are so fun i love gel pens they, they are great for taking notes and journaling and everything. Mm -hmm. They're really great for journaling. So, Or if you're, maybe you're coloring a, a unicorn or something, you want to have some uh, sparkles. Everybody loves a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you guys for joining us today. Let us know if you have any comments or any questions. We are happy to help. And we will be back next Thursday at 4 o'clock live. So join us then. See you guys later.